Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Lassie Brain Cells, and the host of Queen Communities on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. A lot of football talk about this week, obviously. Um, we're going to break down the... Um, the week that's been, of course, that was week number four. A um, lot of shockers. Um, some, you know, some games that, you know, you kind of expected. And then, um, you know, the uh, right now when you look at it here, um, at least, um, you know, there's only one OA school right now that sits winless right now, and that's Bloomfield Hills. So we'll break them down in a couple minutes. Um, let's look at our main story here. We're going to look at is, of course, the, um, some storylines here of this division is you really got to look at is, um, you know, the red is really starting to develop a lot of storylines, um, particularly when you look at the two games that happened this week. Um, West Bloomfield really having no issue with a and um, 44 nothing on their homecoming. Um, you kind of knew for them it was like a, re- like a get-back game, obviously, like a um, recovery game, especially after having two straight losses. Um, so... When you look at West Bloomfield, I mean, like, they're really, um, you know, kind of let, they got that win against a and I know there was a lot of motivation considering what happened to them um, with that 40-35 game last year in the Division One State Semifinals. So, you know, I really think when I look at West Bloomfield, I think they're going to be fine. I mean, like, they're going it, to, it'll be a really interesting matchup coming up with Clarkston um, this week for them. And I think that's going to be something to really keep an eye on is, that matchup with Clarkson. I mean, you know, I mean, curious to see how the matchups are going to look. I mean, obviously, yeah, Alex Wachensko plays. I mean, you know, I mean, with Clarkson, I got to rant about Clarkson here. Um, you know, what happened to them last week um, against Adams. Um, it's not the players I was, I'm very upset with. You know, it's what they're wearing is what I'm upset with because... Their new uniforms, to me, is a complete fashion disaster. I mean, when they played Belleville, they wore the blue, uh, I mean, they wore the white on white. I, I really loved that set of uniforms, and it matched up really well with the um, with the winged helmet that Clarkson traditionally wears. I mean, like, it matches up so well. The new look, the new uniforms, you know what? I mean, like, I'm... Um, going to be really upset about this and I I just don't like the white uniforms they wear I I just don't like the new ones the first one pretty simple I just don't think that the that the um the gold numbering um the last time Clarkson wore gold numbers on their uniforms it was a complete disaster because you know and I and I really think that I, I kind of thought they would have learned their lesson um, wearing the um, wearing gold le- gold numbering on their uniforms. Um, it's just it's just it's not them. It's it's not Clarkston. It's not them. And then you have blue pants to that. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just not Clarkston. Not at all. I mean, you know, so um, it's not the players I'm bashing. It's the uniform design that I'm bashing. So if I'm if I'm. Coach Justin Pintar, this is what I'd say to their JV team. Please get back our um please get back the white uniforms. And you can have the new white uniforms that we have. Because honestly, those uniforms they have on are just completely terrible. They're awful. I mean, just get rid of them. Bring back the blue the the um bring back the white on white. I mean, that's what I would say. Um that's my rant of the week. Um, it's basically Clarkston's uniforms. Um, I, they're just, they're bad. I mean, like, it doesn't match. It doesn't gel with the helmet. It doesn't gel well with, you know, it doesn't gel well with anything. It really doesn't. So, that's my rant of the week. Um, just saying that with Clarkston is, you know, those uniforms they wore against Adams, against Southfield. Um, Arts and Tech, I really don't like those at all. I really like the ones they wore against Belleville. I kind of thought they should have kept those, but, you know, they decided to go a different direction. And, 
you know, that's not a good direction at all. Um, they're one of one of those uniforms. So that's my rant of the week. Um, you know, it's Clarkson's uniforms. Um, let's go to the games here. I mean, obviously the main story in the red, um, you really got to look at, um, Adams 28, Clarkson 10. Um, you kind of look at the success that Adams has had. Um, you know, they always love long drives. They love long drives. They like to keep your offense off the field. Um, they like to keep, keep it in their pace. But then you ask yourself, you know, there's only been one game I know they've been trailing all year long, and that was Romeo, when they trailed by two touchdowns, 14 nothing. But they found a way, came back, and won. Then you look at the West Bloomfield game. I mean, I kind of say I kind of take that back with West Bloomfield because you know they did trail in that game against West Bloomfield. But when you look at the game and you just, you kind of figure out, okay, you know, if the the recipe to beating Adams is always going to be you got to start fast. You have to start fast against them because if you're tied or if you give Adams a lead you're basically in trouble because that's the perfect analogy for coach Tony Petrino in this offense is they're going to run the veer. They're going to, you're going to, they're going to speed, speed option it. They're going to dive. They're going to trap the pitch option. It they'll veer option it. I mean, they'll triple option it, you know? And I think, you know, you look at the, the interview I had after media day with coach Tony Petrino, you know, if, if I encourage you all to watch it, you know what I mean? Because, that's the perfect analogy for Adams' offense is when I asked that question um, about Adams' beer offense, you know, you know, what was it, you know, precipitated with? And I think really, you know, that's really where the, um, you know, you look at why Adams is right now sitting at 4-0. and A lot of it right now is how the beer has been working. Also, the player Rylan Waters, their quarterback, um, he's, had a really good start to the year, his junior year. Um, <clears throat> kind of learned from his sophomore year when he struggled. Um, you know, when, um, when he struggled, you know, uh, but he's really taken this season by storm, and look what he's been doing. Also, the play of Mateo Humber. I mean, he's really, really played well running back. I mean, like, you know, and then, of course, he's had some times where, you know, he's had, he's played that, um, the um, A back, which is their super back position. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, you look at what he's done, he can catch balls too. I mean, he can make plays as well. I mean, you and then also you look at him last year Tillerson. I mean, like he's really been playing well as well. So, you know, so Adams has proven players on this team. They do. And there's a reason why they sit four and all right now. Well, obviously, the Veer, and I say this because they play a lot of time possession football. I mean, you look at the games against Adam, you look at the games against West Bloomfield, where they basically kept the ball away from West Bloomfield for about almost the entire quarter, about 11 minutes and 25 seconds. And then last week against Clarkson, they kept the ball in the entire fourth quarter for about almost the entire quarter. So you really look at the success that Adams has had. You know, it's basically been the Veer offense, you know, and their defense really hasn't been needed to be on the field that much. That Their defense has played really well. I mean, they were really impressive in shutting down the Bowman Twins. Um, they um, they picked off Alex Wachensko, I think, at least once. Um, but when you look at Adams' defense, I mean, their defense has been playing really well lately. I mean, the most they've allowed this year has, has been 14 points. And that was against uh, 21 points if you count the Romeo game. Um, and, um, you know, so when you look at West Bloomington, they allowed 14 points. Um, so really, you know, so when you look at really, um, if you want to beat Adams, you better have to have a fast start and you have to have, um, you're going to have to at least go up, not 14, but 21 nothing. Because if you go up 21 nothing on Adams, 
they're going to have to abandon the Veer. They're going to have to abandon it because, you know, and obviously, you know, and the Veer obviously goes with the um, the offense that, um, you know, obviously when they're up, when they're ahead or they're in a tight game, you know, the Veer basically is benefit, you know what I mean? So basically I would say two touchdowns or less. If it's two touchdowns or more, the Veer is usually is not usually effective. But if it's two touchdowns or less, you know, like this is all from trailing, not leading. Okay. If you're leading, if if Adams is leading, you're really in trouble. If um because they can play time possession football with the Veer. And they're a physical team too. Let's not forget that. They're a physical bunch. I mean, they're an exp- proven experienced physical bunch team. That's what Adams is. But if you basically, the blueprint to the Veer, obviously, if you're up by three touchdowns on Adams, you're in good shape. If you're up on Adams by two touchdowns, you're not in good shape because, one, they have a quarterback who can who's a proven thrower and also a runner, and they got a proven running back, and they got their wide receivers are all right. I mean, like, but, um, but, but really in the Veer system, there's more um, predicated for quarterback run. You got speed option. You got Veer option. You got dive option. You got triple option. I mean, like a lot of that. So I would encourage um, those who want to talk Adams um, to watch my podcast with um, Coach Petrito on Media Day. Um, it goes more in depth talking about the Veer. And, you know, and I think that's really where... Um, you know, when you look at um, when you look at Adams, I mean, that's really where um, you know, I think they're going to be um, you know, that's a good way to describe Adams. I mean, right now they're four, and the reason why they're four and zero right now is, you know, obviously their quarterback play is very good, the Veer, um, you know, so we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I like Oregon this week, so it'll be on one TV, so we'll see how that one goes. Um, let's go get Clarkson now. Besides bashing the jerseys, um, you know, when you look at this game here with Clarkson, um, Alex Wachensko, he had a touchdown pass to Brady Beck, um, 25 yards. Other than that, I mean, Adams' defense, give credit to where credit's due. They shut down the Bowman Twins. I mean, the Bowman Twins, they both play both sides of the ball. They play on the offensive side, they play on the defensive side. So. You kind of think about, you know, what Adams did. I mean, Adams dominated him up front. Um, they really, they really like, um, you know, I mean, Clarkson had chances. They were picked off at least once. Um, and then the other points they got was a field goal from eight, from, um, from was a 25-yard field goal. Um, but Adams, like I said, they had that fast start. They're up 14 nothing. Um and here's the thing, against, if you give Adams a lead in anything, you're done. That's really what it is. You're done. Because they're going to just run the ball down your throat. You know what I mean? And that's what they did. Run the ball, and then if they want to throw the ball, they can throw it they want to. Because, and that's what Clarks, that's what happened to Clarkson. And, you know, they limit your possessions very well. They really do. And that's usually... A recipe for success if your coach Tony Petrito is, and that's something that Clarkson could not get into against Adams. And look what happened! Look what happened! Um. So, and then their defense, obviously, their defense got torched by um Rylan Waters and um and Tillerson. Um, both had nice games. I mean. So really, if you're Clarkson, you just got to move on and um, go back to the drawing board, get ready for West Bloomfield. Um, so that should be a really interesting matchup between the Wolves and the Lakers this week. Um, and then let's look at Lake Orion and Oxford. Um, Oxford took a 21-3 lead at half. Obviously, the play of Luke Johnson. He had two rushing touchdowns. He had 144 yards. Um I think that game was more about Lake Orion than it was Oxford. Obviously, we got to give Oxford credit. Um, their defense played really well, um, especially in that first half. 
um, holding a very high octane Lake Orion offense and only three points. Um, but the defense of Lake Orion really struggled in this game. He really struggled. I mean, like, especially given the play action pass from Jack Hendricks to Dean Rice for a touchdown to start off. And then, and then, um, Lake Orion responded with the field goal, but, um, Oxford got two big touchdowns from Luke Johnson, um, to go out 21, three at the half, forcing Lake Orion to play from behind. Um, Brody Thompson, um, you know, he, I thought Brody Thompson played well. I really did. Um, despite, you know, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you know, and Brody took over for T.R. Hill. I mean, like T.R. Hill did not play in that game. We don't know when he's going to play. Um, we don't know when he's going to play. So, but Thompson, I thought proved he can play the game. He can play. I mean, he had a touchdown. Um, he had a touchdown run that was this call back to the four yard line, and I looked at the replay on OCTV, and it was com he and it was it was completely terrible. I mean, it cost like going to, I think about a minute in um three seconds before Jane Burrow got into the end zone. Um, so it was twenty one eleven. Um. Then they got a big touchdown. Um, I really thought in that um, one instance to play before where um, Jamari Cooper was not called for pass interference. Um, I thought that was a that was a terrible call, that terrible no call there. And then the one he scored on was a um, that was a completely. I don't know what the rest were thinking about. You know, they called a flag for for unnecessary roughness, but I honestly thought, in my opinion, Eli Harper should have been thrown out. Um, but they didn't see it that way. I mean, Lake Orion had a chance. I mean, they had a chance. I mean, they had a block kick from Trey Pacamara, uh, blocked the punt uh, from Drew Katie, and then had a chance of a 54-yard field goal from Will Hoffman, and he missed it wide left. He had the leg, but just went wide left, and Oxford survived that one 21-18. Um, in that one. So when I look at both these teams, I'm going to start with Oxford first. Um, they rely a lot on, for Oxford, they're always their strength has been is start fast and then survive late. And that's always been the philosophy of Oxford football is start fast and then survive late, you know? And I think that's really what happened in that game was, it was a tale of two different games. I mean, like, Oxford dominated the first half. Lake Orion dominated the second half. So, but when you look at Oxford, I mean, like, they still got a tough schedule. I mean, they still got to play um, West Bluefield. They still got to play Adams. They still got to play um, Macomb, Dakota. That's on the schedule. Um, so, when you look at Oxford, it's just rely a lot on Luke Johnson. See what he can give you. I mean, Dean Rice had a nice game for Oxford. I mean, Jack Hendricks was solid. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, they had a really good game plan, um, against Lake Orion and got to give coach Zach Linus and his, and his team a lot of credit. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, now on Lake Orion side, um, it's the same problem, same problem that affected them against Troy. Terrible first half, except this was much worse. I mean, when you look at the first half problem that Lake Orion has. It's it's either they're just not ready to play or it takes them a little bit to get them going. And that's not a recipe for success. I mean, this team got away with it against Troy because, you know, obviously Troy, their defense played really well in that game against Troy. Not in this case against Oxford where they gave up 21 points, let Luke Johnson score. No pressure on Jack Hendricks. Um, and then, you know, you kind of, they actually kind of had their way with him. And then the second half, it was totally different story. Lake Orion showed up. They showed up. But what to, to, to say here is this, is, you know, obviously Lake Orion did not have T.R. Hill. And that's a big loss. I thought Brody Thompson was solid, you know. He played well. I thought Jamari Cooper played well. Um, 
But the defense early on was not very good in that game. It really wasn't. And that's the issue here is for Lake Orion, they've got to fix the slow starts. They got to fix them. If they do, I think they're going to be fine. But they've got to start fast. And especially heading into this week when they play Rochester Adams, that's going to be the key for Coach Chris Bell's team is to start fast. Because if not, then the same fate that Clarkson had awaits them. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, let's go to the white now. Um, recapping this their division there. Um, you know, as we mentioned, A&T, um, now it's 125-14 to 14 in the last three games. The last two games. That's bad. That's really bad. Um, you know, for, for a, um, I know they're young, but still that's not, that's not a good recipe for success. Really isn't. Um, so A&T lost 44, not in the West Bluefield. Um, it was not a good night for them, um, in that one. Groves had no issue, 35-7 against Rochester. Um, kind of very similar to what happened last year over in Beverly Hills. It kind of went over to Rochester. Rochester was was in their um Patriot uniforms and wore the red uniform with the blue top with the blue helmet and the white pants. Um Groves is right now a machine right now. They are a serious machine. And their schedule is very favorable. I mean their schedule looks extremely favorable. I mean they got Harper Woods this week. Um They've already played Stony Creek. They've already played Rochester. I mean, they got to play A and T, um, which I can only imagine how that's going to be. Um, but growth right now, the way they're playing, they've got a lot of confidence right now. They have got a boatload of confidence, and how do you explain it? Is to play Noah Sanders, Jake. I mean, like they have a um. You know, Noah Sanders had a nice game. They've gotten quarterback play. Obviously, Avery Gox playing really well. Um, they're just clicking on all cylinders right now. They really are. And I think they're the best team in the white right now. I really do. Um, Rochester, in their case, I really thought, you know, they struggled again this week. Um, defensively, um, they really... Groves is a good offensive team. They really are. Um, I got to give credit where credit's due, though. Um, but I really think, you know, after the, um, you know, I think the schedule will lighten up a little bit for them. Um, so a chance to get some wins looks really possible for them. They got that Stony Creek game, which is going to be really interesting. Um, which that could be a really interesting game between Stony Creek and um, Rochester. I mean, that should be. But then the game in the division was Harper Woods and Stony Creek. Harper Woods ended up surviving 28-21. Um, obviously, you know, Stony Creek played a lot better. Sam Fogler had two touchdowns. They had a nice, um, they were in it with Harper Woods. Harper Woods, um, I'm just trying to figure this team out. I mean, Harper Woods. They're not the same team without Nate Washell. I mean, that is a problem for Coach Rob Owen. They have not been the same team since going up to um since going up to Oxford. They really have not been the same team since, you know, getting destroyed thirty eight nothing by Oxford. And, you know, they had to survive against Stony Creek. They had to survive against a proven defense. And Stony Creek's not a bad defense. I mean, Coach Rick Powell was there. Um, he's also, you know, I'm not sure if he's a defensive coordinator or not, but, you know, but for Stony Creek, there's some positives here. There really is some positives. When you look at what happened is there is positives, you know, when you look at the competitiveness that they had. Um, I honestly thought they played you know, they played to the level of standard like they did against Warren Cousineau, um, in that game against Harper Woods. 
Harper Woods has got some problems. I mean, they seriously got some problems. And this is a team that, you know, coming into the year, there were a lot of expectations, um, a lot of experience coming back. Um, but the three, but the two losses, you know, really hurt Harper Woods, the Oxford loss, and then the no by Detroit Catholic Central loss. So it, something tells me that this team needs Nate Washington back. They need him back because, you know, when I look at step, I'm, and, I'm not, and I'm not knocking on Dakota Gary. I mean, he's a heck of a player, heck of an athlete. But was he brought, I mean, was he there to play quarterback? No. He's a wide receiver slash defensive back. I mean, that's his natural position. And for him to play quarterback, like he had to do against Nova Detroit Catholic Central, that's a problem. That is a serious problem. Because one, that takes away an offensive threat. Two, that puts pressure on DeAndre Bind. He's only a freshman. But that puts a lot more pressure on him. And, you know, and I think when you look at the situation that they're in right now, they've got to get Washington back. If they don't, they could be in some trouble. And they got Groves this week. So that's going to be very interesting to see how that one goes. Um, you know, for Harper Woods is can they, is can they, you know, they've got to find that magic from what they did against Redford Union on that Saturday when they scored 22 unanswered. But the problem for them is, you know, you look at Groves, Groves defensively has really improved. I mean, the stats prove it. Everything proves it. So they're going to have their hands full. For Stony Creek, they're fine. If Stony, I think Stony Creek's biggest game is going to be Rochester. They still got to play Adams, which is going to be a difficult task. But, you know, I really think, honestly, for Stony Creek, their biggest game is Rochester because, you know, if Warren Cousineau, if they start improving, you know, then that could really help them when it comes to getting those extra points. So when I look at Stony Creek, they're fine. I'm not pressing the panic button yet on this team. I'm really not. So. We'll see. We'll see what happens with them going forward. But for right now, when I look at the um, division right now, I still think, I mean, yeah, Groves Harper Woods is basically the league title game. But I think in all reality, I think Groves right now really is the team to beat in this division. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Go to the blue now. Um, Troy took on Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Um, that was 52-28. Um, in favor of the Irish. Um, Noah Uri played well in that one. He had, I think, two passing touchdowns. One to Jalen Peacock. They had an interception return for a touchdown. Um, but their defense got shredded by Notre Dame Prep. Um, last two weeks for Troy, their defense has gotten as allowed um, 84 points in the last two weeks. That's not good. But when you look at when they get back in the league play, you know, maybe maybe that gets corrected. I mean, maybe. I mean, that's a big maybe because Troy's still got to play Seahome. Um, they still got to play um, Farmington. They still got to play North Farmington. Um, so they got some difficult games ahead, you know, so when I look at for Troy. But for them, I think playing those two games in Lake Orient and Northern Prep, is going to really help them going forward. I think it's going to really help them because now they're battle-tested. Now, you know, they've seen two perennial powerhouses, you know. So I think for them, it's going to come down to is can, um, you know, can Troy bounce back from two tough losses and get back to where they need to be? <laughs> so um, that's going to be the challenge for them going forward as we as they head out in the final five weeks of the regular season playing virtually the league schedule to close out the year. So I think Troy's gonna be fine. I really do. Um Seahome rolling on all cylinders. Big win against Oak Park 28 18. 
the play of Penn Roberts has been unbelievable. I am a big fan of Penn Roberts right now. He is a talent. He is a proven talent. When you look at the Kenny brothers, um, when you look, when you, and they lost, also lost Kyle Robbins as well. Um, you kind of thought to yourself, okay, CM's going to be in for a down year. It looks like they haven't missed a beat. And a lot of it's Penn Roberts. Penn Roberts has really played great football for um for Seahome. He has played really good football. And with Seahome, the schedule does toughen up. They got Farmington this week. They gotta still play North Farmington. They gotta play North Farmington. Um then they gotta play West Bloomfield and Groves to close out the year. That's brutal. That's going to be brutal. So, see home. The tough games are coming. So, we're going to see what type of team coach Jim DeWald has um, coming up with that schedule coming up. So, it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. Oak Park, you know, it kind of took a little step back a little bit. 18 points against see home's defense is not bad at all. But, still... They still got a long way to go. I mean, they got a, they got a long way to go, and I think really, you look at with Oak Park, um, is as I mentioned, this team could, has a chance to be good. They could be competitive. I mean, but like I said, you know, this team they still got a long way to go uh, to get back where they've been, but they're making progress. So I think they're going to be okay going forward. There, um, we'll see what happens. Um, Let's go Farmington 36-10 over Troy Athens. Um, Farmington, Julian Johnson's still out with an injury. I'm not sure if he's coming back. Could he come back this week? I don't know. Uh, but, you know, um, they've got players. I mean, they got proven players there. I mean, Coach Jason Albright, you know, they, they, they took that loss to North Farmington really hard. And their defense played well. They, Anthony Bailey is a proven playmaker. He can play. I'm a big fan of Anthony Bailey's game. I'm really up because he can play. I mean, like he can move the ball, played quarterback. I think he's a running back by trade. Um, I mean, he could play. I mean, like, so basically, you know, he's learned to play the quarterback position really well, and he's done a wonderful job with it. They've got the other proven players. I remember talking to Coach Albright, you know, on the podcast, you know, about which player is going to step up. Farmington, their defense is not bad. I mean, their defense is not bad. They're good defense. Their offense is really starting to click. Other than the North Farmington game, they've been really good all year long, offensively. Um, so Farmington right now, I really like where they're at right now. I really do. I mean, offensively, defensively. They're going to be fine. They just, got, they just got to keep growing and improving. They do. Look out. Troy Athens. You know what? I mean, like, how do I explain Troy Athens? It's hard for me to explain what's going on with this team. I mean, defensively, they're not very good defensively. That's, you know, they, they've struggled defensively. They've had some struggles on the offensive side of the ball. Um, anytime you allow 36 points, that's not good. That's not a recipe for success. So you, their defense has been a big problem. And now they get North Farmington on their homecoming, which is going to be just, I, I can just only imagine how that's going to look. Um, but that defense over there, Athens, it's bad. It's really bad. They've got to get that fixed. And I don't know what you do defensively. I don't know what you do defensively. But they've got to get things figured out quickly. Because if they don't, they're in trouble. And it looks to me like there's with the rest of their season coming up, their schedule coming up, I mean, they still got to play Oak. I mean, they still you got to play Seahome. They got to play Troy. Um, they close out the year at Frazier. That's not going to be an easy game for Troy Athens. But when I look at 
Troy Athens. I was there were a lot of high hopes coming in the year, a lot of high expectations, high hopes coming in the year. They haven't met them. They really haven't. So now I have to, I have to have some questions with Troy Athens. There's some questions, and can this team figure it out before it's too late? That's the big question, the big challenge for Coach Tom Cook and his team is can they figure it out before it's too late? Let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and then our last game in the blue, we got North Farmington 49-14 over Bloomfield Hills. Um, North Farmington has been a complete different team since the Farmington win. And... Obviously, the two losses early in the year to Ferndale and to Lavonia Stevenson. The Lavonia Stevenson loss was a terrible loss. I mean, that was a terrible loss. I mean, how do you not get in the end zone twice in that game against them? How? That's stunning in its own right there. Um, And then the game against Ferndale. Ferndale's a good team. Ferndale's got a lot of experience. I mean, they. I mean, they got a quarterback in Colin Hawk. Um, I mean, like, it's hard to explain, but they had some issues there, and then everything clicked when they played Farmington and got the Farmington jug back from Farmington when they won that one twenty-seven. This was a little bit of a motivation game for North Farmington, considering what happened last year when they lost fifty forty-nine in overtime. So. Yeah, Terrence Shaven had a nice game. Duke Blanche had a nice game. Um, they had a lot of good contributions in that game. Uh, so basically, when I look at North Farmington, they're peaking and they're starting to go in the right direction. There's a reason why I have them ranked 10th in the poll this week. Coach Sean Hurstein's really figured things out and fixed that team real quick. But I got to give credit to the players, too. I mean, they've, they've done a really good job um, turning this thing around. So if you're a fan of North Farms and football, there's a lot of high, there's a lot of um, high expectation now. And I think that's a big deal. That is a big, big deal. So I think I like where they're going. I like where Coach John Herstein's team is going. And, you know, and I really think that's where they're at right now. So, we'll see. Bloomfield Hills, they're taking baby steps. Taking baby steps. Offensively, they put 14 points up, which is a good sign. You know what I mean? They scored 14 points. That's a huge sign. That's a huge sign of progress. That's a great sign of progress. Allowing 49, though, is a little too much. But, you know, so when I look at... um. When I look at um, Bloomfield Hills, defensively, this team still got a problem. I mean, they're they're struggling to give up. They're giving up a ton of points. So that's got to get fixed. Um, I remember last week I said about Bloomfield Hills defensively. I mean, this team, Bloomfield Hills, I mean, they were bad. They're still not very good, but they're making baby steps. They're getting there. They're getting there, but they've got to, you know, they got to find, make progress. And then I think that's really going to be the case for them going forward. They've got to make baby steps because they don't, they're in trouble. And they still got Clarkson's on that schedule. Um, They still got, I think they got Farmington still on that schedule. I mean, it's going to be brutal for them going forward. And then they see home, they've already played Seahawks already. So, you know, Oak Park's still on that schedule. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with them going forward. And then the gold. Um, Royal Oak winning their first game um, of the year, 26-7 over Livonia Clarenceville. I was shocked how that one went. I mean, Royal Oak's defense finally stepped up. I mean, held, holding an opponent to seven points. Um, they were good against Oak Park. Um only allowing 19, but this was a game where their offense finally showed up in this game. Their offense finally showed up 
and you know put 26 up. That's a good start for Coach um, Colin Campbell. Good start is putting 26 on an opponent, uh, on any opponent, especially a team like Livonia Clarenceville, a team that's more than capable of scoring a bunch of points. So defense played well in that one. So Royal Oak, they're starting to, um, <laughs> they're taking baby steps. Got their first win. They're sitting at one and three right now. So it's a good win for them. I mean, really good win for them. Um, Ferndale 30, Berkeley, uh, sorry, Abner 41, Pontiac nothing. Um, Pontiac's really struggling. I think the depth's been a big issue for them. Um, you know, and I really think for, um, for Pontiac, you know what I mean? It's, they're struggling right now. They're really, really struggling right now to find consistency. And that's a problem. I mean, that's a serious, serious problem right now for them. Is, can Pontiac figure it out? You know what I mean? Can Pontiac get back to what they were at back in week one? Um, because right now it's not looking good for them right now. It really isn't. Um, last three games... I think they've been outscored um, last three games. It's not been pretty. I mean, against Troy, against um, against um, against Avondale, and then um, you know the it, it it just hasn't been pretty for Pontiac. I mean, like last three weeks, it's not been good. And this is a team that still got to play Lincoln Kings on the schedule. Um, they got to play. Um, I mean, they still got. And they got, I mean, they, I mean, it was Berkeley that, that, that they had the issues with Troy Berkeley and now, um, Avondale and it was not pretty. It wasn't pretty. They still got to play Ferndale's on the schedule. I mean, like it's going to be a tough goal for coach Wonder Jefferson and his team. It'd be a really, really tough goal for them. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see what for them going forward. Avondale, you know, with them, I really think with them, it's, um, they're starting to get their edge back. I mean, starting off 0-2 with loss to Cedar Springs and um, Seaholm, you kind of thought, obviously, okay, what's going on here? But then they're starting to click offensively. Last two weeks, they put up 75 points. I mean, 75-14. Good roll for them. I mean, like, if you're Coach Bob Meyer... Um, they got to keep this momentum going. If they do, who knows? They do, who knows? So, we'll see what happens with them. I mean, we really will. <laughs> uh, but they're starting to click. And it's a, um, they're starting to click on all cylinders right now. And that's a good sign for them right now. So, we'll see what happens. We'll really see what happens. Um, Ferndale 30, Berkeley 20. Ferndale starting to gain momentum, sitting at three and one right now. Um, Eric Royals got that team believing, senior experience, led of course by their quarterback Colin Hawk. Um, he's really played well for Ferndale. He's really played well. Defense has been up and down, but give them credit, especially after after their loss week one to Mass Knights Lampier. They've really turn things around over there. Um, so there's a lot of good things, good good sign rolling there. So we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens. Berkeley, yes, they lost this one, but I was really impressed offensively. You know, they put up 20 points. They were competitive. I was really happy about that. If last two week, last few weeks, they haven't scored a zero. And then when they played Pontiac, they put 35 up. Then they put 20 up. So last two weeks, 55 points in two weeks, that's good. That's a good sign. You know, albeit the um, points allowed for um, in the um, giving up 30 points, it's not a good sign. But offensively, 55 points, that's a good start. That's a really good start for Berkeley. So if Berkeley can balance it out, I think they're going to be a dangerous team. So when I look at the Bears case, you know, balance leads to to success. And I think that's a good analogy 
for Berkeley is can they, if they can repeat that, I think they're going to be okay going forward. So, very encouraged with Berkeley despite the loss to Ferndale. Ferndale's a really good team this year. Um, you know, really, but I was really encouraged with Coach Casey Humes' team. Um, they've got some things figured out, um, which is a good sign going forward. All right, now let's look at the games coming up week number five of the um, OA season here. Um, let's start with the gold first. Um, we got two very interesting. We got two very interesting games. We got a ver three interesting games. Starting with the blue gold crossover game between Pontiac and Bloomfield Hills. Pontiac comes in one and three. Bloomfield Hills is zero and four. Both teams have struggled all year. Bloomby Hills has shown some promise offensively last week against North Farmington. Um, they've figured some things out lately, which is a good sign. Um, but when I look at this game here, Pontiac, they have the athlete in Kanye Donaldson. Um, now, I'm not sure what's been going on with him lately, but, you know, but it kind of looks at what Pontiac is. They got to get back to what's got them. You know, believing, and that was good offensive football. I mean, the more their defense is on the field, they have problems. And do I see this being a shootout game? Maybe, maybe. I mean, because both teams have really struggled defensively. Both teams have really, really struggled on on the defensive side of the ball. Could it be a low scoring game? Yeah, it could be. So there's really two different avenues of where it could be. So we'll see what happens. But in the game here, I got Pontiac. I got Pontiac because of Kanye. Kanye Donaldson, I think, will make a big difference in this game. The game's at Pontiac. Um, I think they'll make some noise here. And I really like, I think Pontiac will make, will um, get back to what got him. Their week one win against Detroit Frederick Douglass. Um, so I really like Pontiac in this one, but I think it's going to be really, really tight in that game. Then we have the gold title game between Avondale and Ferndale. Avondale's had two early losses. Ferndale had to, um, Cedar Springs and Seaholm. Um, Ferndale's got that one loss to, La to Madison Heights Lampier. Um, this is going to be a good fun game. I mean, Ferndale's got a lot of experience. Avondale likes to run that wing tee. Um, they got Justin Griff Sykes. They got um a lot of proven athletes over at Avondale. Quarterback still scares me a little bit, but it looks like Avondale's starting to get that running game identity a little bit more involved, which is a good sign for Coach Bob Meyer. Their defense has been really good. Ferndale's got experience. Um, so this is going to be a tight game. I think it's going to be a really tight game. Um, but I'm going to go Avondale here. I think Avondale here, um, I think they're going to go into Ferndale and, um, it'll be a tight game, but I just think Justin Greer Sykes, I trust him, you know, to get the job done. They're going to run the ball a lot. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I really like Avondale could go in there and win that game. And I think it'll be a really, really interesting game there, um, between the Yellow Jackets and the, um, Eagles. And then one of my favorite games, the Battle of Woodward. Berkeley and Royal Oak. This game's out early. Um, new field over there, Berkeley. Uh, basically, Berkeley better be motivated after seeing last year's game. I know CMN TV still has that game that where Royal Oak just ran all over Berkeley, and it was 37 nothing. I still couldn't believe that score. I really couldn't. Um, and I'm still shocked to this day, you know what I mean? You know, that Roy, what Roy Oak did in that game against Berkeley. Both teams have seen to figure some things out a little bit. Berkeley on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, Roy Oak put 26 up against Livonia Clarenceville. Um, Berkeley, last two weeks, has put up 55 points. Um, which is both pretty good. So when I look at this game, it, it comes down to defensive trust. Who do I trust defensively? Royal Oaks held Oak Park to 19 points, um, but they did not do a good job against Ferndale. 
Ferndale put 35 up on Royal Oak. They put 30 on Berkeley. Um, so in this game here, I'm going to trust the home team. Here. I'm going to trust Berkeley because they got a linebacker in Ben Bullock, who's a very good player. Um, I think he has a big game. I think the key is going to be is can Berkeley score on Royal Oak? That's the key. And can Royal Oak do the same against Berkeley? Can Coach Colin Campbell open it up? And then, obviously, talking to Coach Casey Humes, I know the motivation that he has for Royal Oak. I think it's going to be a tight game. But I really like the Bears in this one. I think the Bears take back the Battle of Woodward Trophy. And that street sign's going to read Catalpa instead of Lexington. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Blue now. Um, Oak Park and Troy. This is going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a really good game. I think, honestly, in this one here, I'm going to take the Colts. Troy's at home. Noah Orr is playing really well. Jalen Peacock's been playing good football. Um, I, I just think that... Oh, I think that um, Troy really has learned from the two losses to Lake Orion and Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Um, both of them are state powers. Um, I think their defense bounces back. And I think they're going to have a... Um, they're going to bounce back, and I think they're going to have a big game here. I think that Troy's going to have a big game, and I think they're going to learn from the last two weeks what they've been made of. So we'll see what happens there. I'm going to take the... Um, I'm going to take the um, Colts in this one over the Knights. Be a good game. I think it'll be a really good game. Both teams are veteran-heavy teams. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But I really like Troy in this one. This game is at Troy, so we'll see how that one goes. Um, we got um, North Farmington at Troy Athens. Um, <laughs> it's homecoming at Troy Athens this week. And why are they playing North Farmington for their homecoming opponent? Why? This is not going to end well for Troy Athens. I'm sorry. This just isn't going to end well. I'm going to take the Raiders in this one. This could be a blowout over there at Athens. This could seriously be a blowout over there. Um, Terrence James, Duke Blanche, both are going to have big games. So, I think it's going to be the case there. North Farms has really turned the corner. Troy Athens has really not turned the corner. Um, especially defensively, where I think they've really struggled. So, I'm going to take the um, Raiders in this one, ruining Troy Athens' homecoming, um, you know, on their homecoming. So, we'll see what happens in that one. And then the big one in the blue, Sea Home at Farmington. Farm to TV 10 is going to likely have this game. Um, I know the good folks over there have done a really good job over there um, at TB10. They've done a great job over there covering Farmington and North Farmington. This game's going to be interesting because they had Seahome and Farmington two years ago when um, Farmington beat Seahome. And I'm getting the um, re reward to going up to the white, um, which didn't work out well for Farmington last season. So Seahome, you know, new young team, this is going to be their biggest test. But then you got to wonder if Julian Johnson comes back. If Julian Johnson comes back, Seahome could be in some trouble if he comes back. Because the play of Anthony Bailey, he's been, he's been playing good football. Their line, Farmington's line has been playing good football. I mean, like, Farmington's been playing really good football. Um, You might want to give the pass on the loss to North Farmington. But other than that, Farmington's been playing really good football. But so is Seahome. I mean... You kind of question their non-conference. You know, they kind of questioned Seahome's schedule until last week when they beat Oak Park, um, 28-18 at Night Valley. So, in this game here, I'm going to take the Falcons of Farmington. I think Farmington hands Seahome their first loss of the year. Um, it'll be a tight game. I think they'll do just enough to shut down Penn Roberts um, and their high-octane Veer offense. I really think that... Um, I think Farmington, they got a great chance to do really well here. Um, I think Farmington wins this game. Um, it'll be tight. It'll be close. So 
We'll see how that one goes in that one. Um, to the white now. Um, the red-white crossover game. You got Oxford and Rochester. Battle running backs between Jack Lauer and um, Luke Johnson. But in this game, I think Oxford's got way too much, too many weapons. Um, Jack Hendricks is, you know, he's really played well. Um, D. Rice has really been that proven wide receiver that Oxford's been looking for. Um, Jake Champagne's had some moments where he's looked good. Um, I think defensively, the win against Lake Orion was really emotional for Oxford. I know Oxford's got to be very careful about an emotional letdown. But it's also Rochester's homecoming this week, which is going to be really interesting because I know they're going to be amped up for that one. Um, Rochester did not look very good against Groves where they um, got tortured 35-7. Um, I think Oxford's going to go in there and just lay a whooping on Rochester. I just think that, you know, Luke Johnson's going to have a big game against Rochester's defense. Um, I really think Rod Oxford's is going to go in there Pound the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock. And I think that's what they're going to do. Um, it's gonna, they're going to do it all night to coach Eric Vernon's team. And I think Rochester's going to, gonna, and I think Ro and I think Oxford's going to move on and um, get this one and head to three and two on the year. So we'll see what happens to that one. Stony Creek and A&T. Um, I, I like Stony in this one. It's not going to be close. I just think that the Cougars, um, the way that they played against Harper Woods, they really showed me something. They really, I really thought that um, Sam Boger is really starting to um, improve on their coach Rick Powell's offensive scheme. Um, they had, they, I mean, they played, they played really well in that game against Harper Woods despite losing to him. But I really like the Cougars in this one. I think Stoney's going to have a field against a and Um a and T, they're in a downward spiral right now. I mean, like really. I mean, they're they're really, they're really that bad right now. I mean, they're not the same team since the Flint feature game. Um, so I'm gonna take the um Cougars in a blowout at Stony Creek against um Southfield Arson Tech. And then you got Groves and Harper Woods. This is like the white title game. Harper Woods is coming off two tough losses. Um. Do Oxford and nobody Detroit Catholic <laughs> and nobody Detroit Catholic Central. Excuse me there, but they bounce back um, in a big way. Um, Oxford, you really look at what that. I mean, you really look at with with um Harper Woods coming off a surviving win against Stony Creek, um, twenty eight twenty one. Um, a good bounce back for them, but this is going to be an interesting matchup. You don't know the status of Nate Washlow. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how, if Rochelle does come back, I think Harper Woods does have a chance in this one. But Groves is right now playing in another stratosphere right now. They're, the way that they're playing, they're playing really good football right now. So I'm going to take the Falcons in this one over the Pioneers. Um, then I'll send Harper Woods to 2-3 and three on the year. Groves will be undefeated. Um, most likely going to win the white title this year. So we'll see how that one goes in that one. And then you have the red matchups. You have West Bloomfield and Clarkston. Um, this is going to be a good match. I mean, last year, Clarkson beat West Bloomfield at Clarkson. It's back at Clarkson this year. The only difference is Clarkson's changed uniforms, um, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, also, you know, the different quarterback with Alex Wachensko there. Um, you know, and I think Wachensko has really improved, but this is going to be his toughest matchup of the year going up against the Lakers defense. It's athletic. Um, but for Clarkson, their defense is going to get tested, especially with Elijah Durham and, um, Cameron Flowers. Um, Josh Chase really improved. Um, so in this one here, um, I know West Bloomfield's not fared well at Clarkson in the past, but I think that changes this year. Um, I'm going to take the L boys over at Clarkson. Um, I think they're going to do just enough to shut the Bowman twins down. It wouldn't surprise me if it's a shootout. It wouldn't surprise me if this game's a shootout. It really wouldn't. Um. But I just think that, um, you know, West Bloomfield, I really think that with them, um, you know, I think they're going to start clicking at the right time. So I'm going to take West Bloomfield on this one over Clarkson. It'll be a tight game, but I think, you know, they just got just enough firepower to um, 
find a way to win this one against a very good Clarkson team. And then last but not least, Lake Orion Rochester Adams. Last year it was 35 nothing in favor of Lake Orion. Um Adams has won all four games. They've their t- their longest deficit's been two touchdowns. And that was against Romeo. They came back and won that in overtime. Lake Orient's more than capable. We don't know the status of Tristan Hill. Does he play this week? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he plays this week or not. If he does it, at, at, in this game's gonna get this game. I gotta give Adams the advantage. Adams plays a time possession game. We talked about this earlier on the podcast with the Veer, and they got a quarterback in Ryland Waters. They got Mateo Hummer at running back. Defense has been very good. Lake Orion played better than the second half against Oxford. The key for Lake Orion and Coach Chris Bell is going to be is the fast start. If they can get out to a fast start, then that's going to help their chances. If they don't, if they don't, and, and I've said this for the parameter, if you get Adams down 21 nothing, if you get if you lead Adams 21 nothing, you're in good shape. If you are 14 or below against Adams, you're asking for trouble. You give Adams the lead, you're really asking for trouble. So in this game here, I'm going to take Lake Orion. I think Lake Orion's going to be motivated to what happened last week against Oxford. Um, I think Lake Orion will um, bounce back in this one. I think Jackie Vasquez is a big game here. Um, I think this is tight, um, but I really think the Dragons are going to really make, an, make amends for what happened last week, and I think they're going to find a way and win this one. So I'm going to take Lake Orion in a all semi-shootout, but... I think it'll be a heck of a game between the Dragons and the Highlanders like it's always been in the past. So we'll see what happens going forward um, between these two teams. All right, we're going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at saginawbay 4650 for the latest information around the OA. 